top of the morning to you. I am Pastor JC. Mike Nelson is here today, my co-host. And this is Joy TV. Welcome today to the Word of God. May you be blessed by it. Psalm 53, 1 says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. You know, we call a person who says there is no God an atheist, but the Bible calls such a person a fool, a foolish person who says there is no God. So he lives by his own feelings or by his own uh, philosophy or theories. But the child of God lives by faith in God, has this total confidence and faith that the Lord Jesus Christ is real, that he died on Calvary. And this faith in God is what causes a child of God to be strong and to, and to persist and to exist in this world of sin. Uh, just as a pilot cannot reach his destination without the help of radio transmission, neither can the child of God reach heaven without faith. You know, the uh, writers of the Word of God were led by the Holy Spirit to write within the limits that are imposed by their context. Uh, they do not veer off from what they were writing. Each book in the Word of God has a thesis and each author sticks to that context and holds true to, to that word and to that objective. And so all scripture relates to its context. And I'd just like to share with you right now what the Word of God has to say about the writings of it and how it came into existence. And I'd like for us to go to 2 Timothy, the third chapter and the 16th verse. And Mike, if you can find that for us real quickly here, I would like for you to read that for us. 2 Timothy 3.16. 3 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Should I continue to 17? Um, yes, why don't you go and read that too. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Now notice he says here, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Not some of it, but all of it. That means from Genesis to Revelation, everything that is written here. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness and it's for the benefit for the man of God or the child of God so that he may be perfect in other words live his life according to God's will and this is what God wants and he wants us to be thoroughly, thor uh, thoroughly furnished thor thoroughly furnished uh, with his will in our life so that we do good works I also like what uh, the Apostle Peter says let's go to 2nd Peter 1:20, because he also addresses the um, uh, the the context or the the writings of the Word of God where it came from and so second Peter 1 and 20 it goes like this knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost so the entire Word of God came by the inspiration of God. And so this is what is very critical here for us to understand. And we're talking about faith. So our faith is in the Word of God and that it came from God. Now, there are a lot of people today who are saying this was just written by a bunch of men. But the Word of God declares that it is the inspiration of God and our faith holds to that fact that it is the absolute truth that God has given this to us. Now, the, the book of Hebrews was written within also the law of its context. And uh, when we get to, we're going to be taking a look at Hebrews the 11th chapter here today. And uh, the first three verses, what they do uh, are they define faith, and then the rest of that chapter 
uh, illustrates faith. And then when you get into the 12th chapter of Hebrews, it exhorts us to have faith, have faith in God. So um, we, are, we are to have faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that God the Father gave His Son 2,000 years ago to come to this earth and to take on flesh. He put on a human body and He lived on this earth for 33 years and He gave His life. Our faith is in that, uh, that fact that He gave His life for us so that we could be safe from our sins, so our lives could be saved, and that we could have everlasting life with God. Mike? Amen. Yeah, with faith, it's, it's uh, I was thinking about it this morning when I, was, when, I was, when I was studying. With faith, it's something that can't be shaken. You can't, you can't get faith to, to turn its back or to change. Faith is, is, is uh, when somebody tries to convince you otherwise, you just, it's just something you can't be unconvinced of. When you have faith, you just, it's just fact. You just know it that, you know, no, God is God and he, he's lifted me up and he gives us life. He, he created the world uh, just by speaking it out. Uh, even in Genesis, how it illustrates how God created the world by, by speaking. He has that power. Faith is is believing, not just believing, but knowing that 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 is that's just fact. That's just how it is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so having that faith, it's just um, it, it's uh, it, it's evidence of, of things that you, you can't see, but you know you, you know it's there. You know God created it. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Now what I want us to do is I want us to take a look at Hebrews the eleventh chapter and the first verse, and I like for you to read that for us because this is going to tell us what faith is. It defines faith for us. In fact, the first three verses will define faith for us, and we're going to be dealing with those today. Okay, so I'll go ahead and read through three. Uh, yes, now. yeah, yeah, 11, 1 through 3, one yeah. Through three. Cool. Mm. All right, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed not by... Or, framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay, I, I like that what he says and we're going to be dealing with that also. Things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So what we see here on this earth uh, was not in existence before creation. And so I know today a lot of people believe that there was already something in existence and God just took what was already here and formed it. But the Word of God teaches us that there was nothing and God spoke everything into existence. It just came into existence by His Word. Now, uh, faith, it is a lifestyle that God requires. And uh, take a look at that sixth verse. Read that for us, Mike. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, so we, we know God not by seeing him, but we know him by relationship. Okay, we know, we know him personally by faith. Uh, I like what Jesus said in John uh, 20 and 29, uh, concerning this very thought. And uh, let's go there just a second here, John 20, 29, and um, see what Jesus has to say here. He says it like this, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And so this is what faith is. We are blessed because our faith is in him. He said, because we have not seen him, yet we believe in him. Thomas, he was a doubter, and he said, I've got to see him in order to believe. Well, seeing God is actually not going to make a believer out, out of a person. I've heard a person say years ago that if God were to come down and show himself to, to him, and he would say, I am God, and blah, 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 I said, I would believe. And, and I, I thought about that, and I thought, no, you wouldn't. 
you 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 wouldn't believe you if in a matter of just hours or days you would begin to question what you saw okay you would think you were hallucinating or it was it, 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 it was it was something he ate or it was an illusion or something okay you, we, you don't believe because you see you believe because of your faith in God it's a personal relationship that we have with God and that's how we our faith how it grows and how our faith how it exists and persists so that's uh, that's very important so it's a lifestyle that God requires we can't please him without faith um, also faith it is salvation uh, go back to Hebrews 10 39 and I'd like for you to read that for us Mike okay this is what faith is 1039 but we are not of them who draw back into unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul okay so we are not of those who draw away into ruin but we are those who believe to the saving of the soul so our faith is in God and that's what saves us our faith in God that's he said that's who we are and so that's what uh, uh, what uh, faith is it is salvation <clears throat> also it is seeing the invisible uh, go to 1127 11, this is 27. Hebrews 1127 and read that for us by faith he, and this is Moses yeah. by faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible okay so Moses here he knew that by forsaking the king by forsaking Egypt he was, you know, there was some wrath coming from, from, from the king. Now, he, he didn't care about that. He, he was more concerned about uh, going after God, enduring, going after God. He couldn't see God. Uh, he, he, was, he was going after the invisible God. And, and that, that's faith. That's, that's, that's faith in, in action. We go after, um, after God. We can't see God. We can't, it, the Bible says, no eye can see, no ear can hear, yeah. our, our heart or our mind. We can't con conceive what God uh, has in store for us, but it's through our spirit. Uh, it's through faith. Faith is, is, is God's spirit in us. It's uh, that faith is evidence uh, of God's spirit being present in us. And so to me, that's what faith is. And that's what Moses had here. It's describing it or it's illustrating uh, uh, faith. Well, you know, with Moses not fearing the wrath of the king, that really exemplifies true faith because that's what we experience in this life. When things come against the wrath of man, uh, we, our faith in God is what holds us and keeps us from crumbling or, or giving in to fear, okay? Because we know if we give in to fear, that cancels out our faith. But our faith, as we hold on to it, it cancels out fear and the wrath of man can be very fearful okay uh, it, it can be a, a very scary experience uh, somebody's threatening your life uh, or, or, or somebody just is uh, not doing you right okay wherever it may be and your faith in God is going to hold you strong and confident during that experience in your life and this is what is so great about Moses his faith in God because he knew that the king could take his head yeah. okay but he didn't fear okay the wrath of the king he endured he endured okay as seeing him who is invisible he saw as seeing him who is invisible isn't yeah. that great yeah it's like we can't see God but we do see God with our faith yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah with that faith I, I remember a uh, time back you, you you'd preach this I think earlier this year actually um, faith is going to get us through the most difficult times in our lives the most no matter what it is the most difficult thing we will ever experience in life it, it's not stories that we hear it's not uh, different things people talking to us but it's our faith in God that's going to get us through those hard times nothing else yeah amen praise God good news good news praise God Amen. So it looks like we're winding up, so um, we will be right back. Um, and we have some more um, inspiration and, and more uh, faith to deliver to you. So stay tuned. Amen. Praise God. 
Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. A substance is a foundation, it is a support, it is the assurance or the title deed, it is the ground upon you uh, which one builds hope, it's a legal document, it's evidence of ownership. You do not build your house on balloons, but you build it on substance, something that is solid. And that's what faith is. Faith is a solid belief that cannot be moved. Substance, it holds strong in the midst of all adversity, all trials, all temptations. Your faith in God has substance. And then the, it's, the Word of God says it is evidence. Evidence is proof. Uh, it is a conviction. Uh, that by which invisible things are proved. If you go to court, you, you want evidence if you want to win the case. And so faith is evidence of those things that you do not see. But it is, it is that proof that you have. It's that conviction you have. If faith is the title deed of things hoped for and makes us certain of realities that we do not see. So it is a persuasion. I like what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy, the first chapter, the 12th and 13th verses. And would you read those for us, Mike? 2 Timothy 1 and 12. 12 and 13, 13. yeah. <clears throat> for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast in the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me, in faith and love, in, in faith and love, which is in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Okay, now, notice what the Apostle Paul says here. He says, um, he said he suffers for his faith, okay? Uh, there are people that come against him. There are people that do not uh, agree with him, and so they oppose him. But he says, I am not ashamed. He said, you know, my faith in God is what causes me to be bold and daring. He said, for I know whom I have believed. He said, you know, it's not a question. There's no doubt in my mind. I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able. There's, it's, it's a persuasion. He knows that God is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So he knows that God is faithful. He knows that God is not going to let him down. No, he has never seen God, but he knows God. It's by this relationship that he has uh, created by his commitment to God, his love for God. Uh, he has this substance, he has this evidence, he has this confidence, this is his faith in God. Yeah, it, it's, it keeps us from being like, like uh, Paul here, keeps us from being unashamed, or, or it, keep, it allows us to be unashamed uh, of, of God. When, when people ask you, oh, you're a Christian, and, and they have their, their things to say, you know, you're unashamed, you're not, oh, you know, they're saying this yeah. about, no, I'm, I'm a child of God, I mean, you know, you wouldn't be ashamed of your parents to say, "Oh, th these are my parents." You know, you, you're, you know, but with God, you're, you know, you're, you're proud to be a child of God, and you're unashamed. There's no reason for you to, to not be glad and to be proud and to be, to be bold. You know, knowing that your father is the, the creator of the universe. Yes. You know, it's just, it's just real amazing. But that, that faith, it gives us uh, power in our lives to, to push forward and, and to, to do things that normally we wouldn't, wouldn't do otherwise. Yes. It's a strong persuasion. I, I like that word. He said, I am persuaded that he is able, that he is able, that he won't let me down, that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. He is faithful. I like that. And that's what our faith in God is. No matter what is moving around us, our faith keeps us solid because it has substance to it, okay? It's not just a, a verbal uh, 
uh, wordage that we come up with. It's not something that we just uh, want to create on our own just to make us feel good. But our faith is deep. It's solid. It goes deeper than the marrow of our bones. And it's it holds us true in the midst of every adversity, no matter what is coming against us. And this is the faith that Jesus had. This is the faith that he taught us to have in God. He said, have faith in God. See, So he is a teacher. He is a leader. He is an example. The Apostle Paul follows that example. And we today follow his example. See? Yeah. And being persuaded, I like that. I like that too, being persuaded. Anybody that's, you, know, you see somebody is persuaded, you can't talk them out of it. You can't get them to, to go a different dire direction. And so that's how we need to be, just stubborn and, and bullheaded for, for God. For God. Um, I and, agree. And being just, just totally uh, persuaded to go and be led by God. That's, that's, a, that's what we need is, is that persuasion. And that persuasion we get through is through faith. It's, it's our faith in God. It keeps us from being wishy-washy. Too many uh, people today are vacillating with their faith uh, or their testimony in God. And it's bringing a reproach upon the kingdom of God because uh, one day they're for God and the next day they're not. They're back and forth. They, you know, they're, just, they're, they're waffling. And uh, where when you have this persuasion, like you were saying, okay, you're solid. Nothing is going to move you. Nothing is going to change your attitude. No, no matter what happens. And, and uh, you will be tested. You will be tried, but if you're solid, it's not going to affect you. It's not going to change you. You're you're not gonna you're not going to move from it. You are who you are. Your faith in God is solid. Yeah, and it keeps us strong throughout throughout adversity. Um, I don't know if you remember when we were at the um, returning the fire, doing the last paperwork for the fireworks. There's a guy talking, and just as you're waiting, um, you kind of hear. You know, you're not listening to people's conversations, but you kind of you hear people talk. And this guy said, if you, if you, if you, if I was in a bad mood, you'd never know it. You'd never know if I was in a bad mood. And I was like, man, that's how we should be, yes. is, is being faithful. You know, like you said, people are wishy-washy. Someday they're in a good mood. Someday they're in a bad mood. But it's our faith that keeps us in, keeps, keeps our joy. Yes. Uh, keeps our, our hope alive is through our faith in God and, and not allowing things that, that we experience here on earth to, uh, persuade us otherwise. You know, we need to continue to be persuaded for God and our just our mood, our attitude, our outlook, the way we treat people. It needs to be um, be the same, be faithful, just like God is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the the, the other thing is this: that uh, faith has the power to see and realize the unseen. That's what it is. And that's what Paul is referring to. And that's what Jesus referred to in John. He said, blessed are those who have not seen me, yet they believe. And so we have three sets of eyes. We have the natural eyes, we have the mind's eye, and then we have the spirit eye. And we see God with our spirit. Our faith in God sees what our mind can't see and what our natural eyes cannot see and so we we allow those eyes to be healthy and we keep those eyes focused on the lord jesus christ because they affect the other eyes of our life okay yeah. and so we have to keep ourselves uh in tune and healthy in our faith in god by keeping our eyes 20 20 on you know in the spirit yeah spiritual eyes are so important a lot of people um, don't realize that, but it, it allows us to see from Genesis to Revelation where we where, where we came from, what where everything started from. Right now, today, where we're going, where you know how we how we are to live our lives, and also into the future, where what, what God has in store for us in heaven. It's with those spiritual eyes that we're able to discern that in the Word of God and have that hope and have that faith. Uh, from where, where God, God's promises He's given us to the promise that we're going to have in the future when we're in heaven with God, and so if we, we can, you can't see that with your eyes, your physical eyes. You can't, you yeah. can't. Like I said earlier in the scripture, it said you can't see it, you can't hear it, but it's through the Spirit that you pick these things up. And God's, God gives us this information, but it's through our spirit. We can't receive it or see it otherwise. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, our faith in God is what also gives us our, our purpose and plan for life. I am doing what I do as pastor of this church because of my faith in God. It started way back when I first got saved. It was baby faith, but I built upon that faith, the next level. It's, it's just faith is layer upon layer upon layer. We build our faith, and in that faith came the calling into the ministry. And that ministry started off um, very small, very, you know, just it, it, it was um, a ba very baby, babyish type uh, ministry. But it was, it was a good ministry, and it was a building ministry, and it was building me and preparing me for pastoral work. See, I would never be where I am today if I hadn't started back when I did. So our faith builds layer upon layer, and that's the way it is within every, everyone's life. We find our purpose in, uh, in life and the plan that God has for us by the faith that we have in him, that baby faith, that salvation faith, and then we build upon that faith, another layer. We build upon that faith, another layer, and we keep building it, and in the process, the plan is developed, yeah. and the purpose for our life is developed. It all comes together through that faith. Yeah. I kind of liken it to, a, um, I look at my garage and, and the tools that I have, and I don't have very, I, I have a few tools, but when you go and you look at people's garages that are obviously older than I am or have you know more time to accumulate things, I went to a, a, a family friend or a family member of ours um, this week, and he you know went into his garage, and um, and I was kind of looking around, and he had so much stuff, and it's just like you wouldn't go to the hardware store and, and buy all these things all at once, but he's accumulated these things over time, and just like I've accumulated the little bit of tools I've had. It, as the jobs come up, I, I get the tools, and so God equips us with the tools as we need them. And then over time, you know, I notice with the little bit of tools, I can do things, and then God throws something at me to do, and, it, and it's a it's a breeze. And then I'll use those tools, and I may need to add a tool to it. You know, that faith kind of builds up until you have a, a a garage full of tools, and you can really do a whole lot of work. And so that's how God, you know, works with us and builds our faith, similar to you know. But it doesn't just happen overnight. You got to keep working towards it. Yes, yeah. yes. Good analogy. I, I like that. Yeah, we build. We build ourselves into a profession with our faith. God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us, but it's all conducive to our faith in God. It's a simple, baby-like faith that we give to God, and we build it, and it matures, and it, we collect, collect more and more and more. And so, and we develop and grow and mature and become someone that is successful or someone that is dependable. Uh, and, uh, and this is what God uh, plans for our lives. But again, it's, it's conducive to our faith in God. What we are going to do when adversity hits us. What are we going to do when big questions come against us? What are we going to do when uh, temptation hits us? Are we going to keep our faith or are we going to cave in and give up our faith? And if we do that, then we lose, okay? We, ba we backslide, the Word of God says. We're going backwards now instead of going forward. So our faith is what holds us and keeps us sure. And like the Apostle Paul says, he says, I'm persuaded, okay? He said that... Uh, God is able. He's able to do what he said he would do. That which I've committed unto him, that which I have come into agreement with God in, God will do it. God will do it. That's my persuasion. Now notice, this is at the end of his life. So he's been serving God for quite a while, but he has developed that faith. He has built that faith in God to that point where it just, you know, I, I know God. Yeah. I know God. Yeah, and it's awesome. God will be there to to build our faith. He's he's that's what we build our faith on is God. Yeah. And so and He's just there and He's ready for us to, to help us continue to grow and and give us His Word, give us guidance, having the Holy Spirit fill us up. Um, but we have to do our part for God to do yes, His part. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Faith is excellent. Faith is powerful. Faith is dynamic. Faith is your key to heaven. Your faith 
in God. Praise God. Amen. Faith is not a rash, feeble-minded hypothesis. It is not wishful thinking or a dream. But faith in God is substance. It is evidence. And that is what is so critical to our relationship with God. Having this total faith in God, a solid faith, it's a solid persuasion. You know, in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and in the second verse, uh, we read about the elders having faith. So, is faith for just New Testament saints only? Well, according to Hebrews 11, 2, we're going to find out that it's not. It's for, it's for everyone. Can you read that for us, Mike? Uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and the second verse, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Okay, so who are the elders? Elders are the um, those that are mature in the faith. Okay, take a look at A. Elders are the Old Testament saints, of which many are reported in this chapter. Okay, so the elders referred to here are the Old Testament saints. So those are before Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there was n there was no Jesus uh, who had died for their sins but they had faith in God. And in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, we find that we have the hall of faith, is what this uh, uh, particular chapter is called, uh, because it names many of the, the Old Testament elders that had faith in God. And it just, it, just, it, uh, it uh, brings them out very, very clear that they had their trust in God. So if they in the Old Testament, not having a Bible, not having Christ, not having uh, the hope of salvation that we have today, could live by faith in God, then how much more should we be able to, you yeah. see? Because we've got the Bible, we've got churches all over the country where you go in and hear the word preached, okay? Uh, you've got television where you can see it preached. You got radio. You know, there's just so many. You've got internet. There's just so many ways you can hear the word of God preached. So we don't have an excuse for not having faith in God. Yeah. We can build our faith. You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So the more we hear the word of God, the more faith we have. Hear the word of God, faith. Hear the word of God, faith. And you just keep building your faith by hearing the Word of God. Well, the Old Testament saints didn't have the Word of God, okay? Yeah. Now, they had the law, okay? They had the law that Moses had, uh, but uh, that was all they had. But they had this faith in God. Yeah, and it's amazing. God really, really tested the, uh, the Old Testament, um, the elders. Um, when you hear about, uh, when you hear about uh, uh, Abraham, he was asked, um, to do some pretty pretty amazing things he was asked to i mean he was really tried oh man yeah same thing with um he was one thing that that that, that uh comes to mind is um in dealing with his wife sarah and they had they had a child um but his wife sarah was up in age it was and she was barren it was, it was she had two strikes against her as far as uh, having a child uh but god said you know you're gonna you're gonna bear a child you're gonna bear a seed and I can imagine how, how difficult that is to, to imagine because here in the natural world we think, you know, don't count your chickens, you know, until they, don't count your chickens until the eggs have hatched. Yeah. Well, God is wanting them to believe that they're going to have something come out of an empty basket, you know, and, and, and by faith, Abraham believed in what God had told him. And sure enough, God's, God's promise came to life. Yeah. And so it's that, that faith that they had. Um, before there was Bibles, before they had all the resources that, that we have to learn more about God. He just he just believed in God. He just had that, that rock solid faith in the Lord. And so that's what we need to have. Now that we have everything, we have the Holy Spirit guiding us and leading us. Like you said earlier, there's there's really no excuse. There's no excuse. Yeah. No. Our faith in God should have no problem. We should not be questioning God at all. We should just believe because we have so many helps today, so much support today, so much 
that God has given to us to build our faith and to keep us. You know, you just, all you have to do is just wander into a church and just sit down in there, just being in the presence uh, of God many times by just going to his house is going to be a faith builder many times. You know, I just, I just enjoy just going to the house of the Lord. And so, but in the Old Testament, they didn't have that. Abraham didn't have that. He built an altar unto God, okay, and uh, gave thanks to God. But he did everything by faith, everything. Uh, even when God gave him a son, the promise was, uh, uh, was fulfilled. Even then, God said to Abram, said, I want you to take your son now and go sacrifice him. Take his life, okay? And Abraham didn't have anybody to confide in. He didn't have a pastor, a preacher. He, didn't have, he was by himself out there in the wilderness, man. And what did he do? He just obeyed God by faith and said, okay, I'll give you my son. And he took him to Mount Moriah to, to literally sacrifice his son. Yeah. What faith? And, and, and God blessed him. God loved him. God saw that Abraham's heart was true. Yeah. He was obedient to, to what God had, had yeah. told him. You know, when, when, when God asks us to do something, whether it's large, you know, God's not, probably not going to ask us to sacrifice our child. No. But he's going to ask us for small things. He's going to ask us uh, for, for things that are going to, you know, maybe not be the most difficult thing. But, you know, he's going to ask us to step out of our comfort zone from time to time. Yes. And, you know, how much more so should we be able to pick up our Bible in the morning and read it on a daily basis or twice a week give up a, a, an hour and a half or two hours to come to the house of the Lord? Yeah. You know, that's what God expects from us. And he asks these small things. Uh, and so by faith, we should be following through and, and doing those things. Yeah. You know, when I came to God uh, and I put my faith in him, God told me to give up things in my life that I liked but these were things that were damaging to me these these were things that if I continued in them today I would be having real physical problems probably be six feet under right now okay because that's how damaging those things were in my life and God told me quit those things give those things up and and uh, serve me I want all of you. I don't want some of you. I don't want. I don't want you when uh, only when you're feeling good because of substance in your life or whatever. I want to know that I can depend on you 24/7. And see. And so I gave up those things, all those things, and some of those things were difficult because they had just intertwined with my appetite in, in my life. And I said, I'm giving them up. I'm good. I, I, I remember telling God. In the first year that I got saved, I said, God, if I have the craving in my mouth for this stuff the rest of my life, I'll never touch it again, and uh, I'll go to my grave with it because I brought it on myself. You didn't put this on me, and nobody forced me to put this stuff in my body. I did it to myself. So I'm going to prove to you I love you. I'm committing my life to you, and I'll give these things up. I won't touch them again. And if I suffer, it's my own doing. I did it to myself. And, um, and I was serious with that. I mean, and I had, I had a, some real issues my first year in, uh, in Christianity, serving the Lord. But after that first year, it's like, boom, the, the weights begin to fall off. And the, the, all the stuff that I had addicted myself to began to fall off of me. And they just began to die off. And things began to change in my life. And uh, it, it was tremendous. And so, but in that, my, my first year of serving the Lord, this doesn't happen with everybody, but it happened with me. Um, I did a lot of proving to God and a lot of proving to myself. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to stick with God no matter what. Okay. No matter. I don't care. I'm serving God. See? And that was my faith in God. And I built upon that faith. Okay. And, but I did have a pastor. I did have a church. Okay. I had a responsibility in the church. And, I, and that responsibility also helped me. Because I knew that if I failed, I would affect those that um, uh, I was influencing. Okay, I knew that if I were to fall, I would cause others to fall. And I said, I can't do that. I will not do that. Even for if it's just for their sake, I won't fall. I will not give up. Because I'm not going to cause anybody to leave the church, cause anybody to go to hell, 
because of my stupidity and my foolishness and going back into sin. Yeah. So I was determined. Yeah. Yeah, I know when you when you go to work for Christ, when you go to work for the Lord, it's uh there's so much accountability and it ends a good thing. You become responsible not only to like we would become responsible to something out in the world, but when you become responsible to God and his house for for, for something, whether it be big or small, you're accountable, and it's just, um, and you've been called for a purpose, and it's, you know, it's, it, it gives you strength in your life, and, and, and like I said, you have to be accountable, you have to, you know, be worth um, being in that position, you can't, yes. you can't bring a reproach to, to God's name, True. and so that's why, that's why I think it's so, so I wouldn't be in the position I am now if I hadn't, um, become a part of this ministry if God hadn't called me to this ministry and so you know so much and I, I've grown so much by being a part of this ministry by doing God's work even in the in the greeters ministry driving the bus I mean it's really amazing I really love driving the bus out you know and it's that work that God called me to you know it's it's um we can have faith um, but when we go to work for God that faith even builds it, it bolsters our faith even more so it when does you, when you work for God yes yes yeah. yes and so, you know, you encourage me, Mike, and I encourage you. It, my faith in God helps build your faith in God, okay? I can influence you. I can't build your faith for you, but I can, I can influence you to build your faith by my building my faith and being faithful and consistent to the Lord. For example, if I were to fall away from God, how do you think that would affect you? How do you think that would affect your family if suddenly I just said that I'm through <clears throat> I quit I'm not gonna preach anymore I'm through with God I'm through with the whole kit and caboodle and I'm out of here how do you think that would affect you now you may not fall away from God but it would it would really stunt your faith and your growth in God and then you may eventually fall away from God I've seen it happen many many times but by my faithfulness and my commitment and my solidarity with God and my faith in God it helps you because when you face adversity, when you face some things in your life, I'm sure that you reflect on me. You say, yeah. I, I remember a pastor going through something. I remember how he held on and he fought through that thing and, and God blessed him through that. And I'm going to do the same thing. So we influence one another, you see. And I do that with you too, okay? I'll, I'll look at, I'll, I'll remember some things in your life because we watch one another. Yeah. You know, we may not just, you know, sit there and, and and gaze at one another, but we observe uh, one another, and we observe just the situations that each one going through and, and how they are handled. And, um, and those help us when we see that uh, others have made it through. You've made it through, I've made it through, others, we've, we've beat through that thing, and, and, the, and, and God gets the glory, and the faith has just excelled greatly. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you when you go and, and you're dealing with something, and you, when you when you punch through, it's not just you, you pop through, but with God, you, you punch through, and, and you know it's just it's oftentimes miraculous when you break through something. Yes. It's and what I mean miraculous, you couldn't have done it by yourself. It was by God. It was impossible without God. And so when we when we have those breakthroughs in our lives, um, God gets the glory for that. We're learning um, earlier this week that. Um, our lives are we were created to glorify God and so when we go in faith and, and we deal with these things just know when when our when we overcome that that God's gonna get the glory for that yes. and that's that's the the most important part is God getting glory um, in all that we do our faith is what helps us like you say punch through all obstacles everything the Apostle Paul called it pressing you gotta press toward the mark okay <laughs> I mean you got to fight you got you got to be determined but it's your faith in God that keeps you on track it's your faith in God that fuels your energy and your drive if you don't have any faith in God you don't have any energy you don't you know you don't you don't have any real focus it's your faith in God and that's what Paul had and many times when I'm going through something I just go to the word and and, and pick up someone's experience. It may be, it may be Job, it may be David, uh, it may be Abraham, it may be Paul. It, it's someone, but someone who was going through something, and I see how they barrel through that thing. 
they held on yeah. and their faith in God gave them victory and and so that helps me okay keeps me on track keeps my faith bolstered and keeps me solid in the Lord our faith in God how critical it is yeah and it's inspiring when you see somebody um, through faith overcome and it's not so much that other person but it's it's God working through that other person that that bolsters our faith yes yeah. Amen. so faith is not a hypothesis it's it's not a riddle okay it's not a secret faith is substance faith is evidence faith is seeing the unseen it is knowing god for who god is do people of faith believe only in god's account of creation good question Mike, read Hebrews 11 and 3 for us. All right, Hebrews 11 and 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay. So he says here, things which are seen <clears throat> with the naked eye were not made of things which do appear, do appear which we see now. Okay, so, so, Faith says all things came into existence by the word of God only, okay? It didn't uh, make itself, it didn't evolve. It was God's word that brought everything into existence. He spoke it into existence. In fact, let's go to John, let's go to the first chapter, and let's take a look at the first five verses we're talking about faith in God if you have faith in God the word tells us that what you will do is you will believe that God created everything and it wasn't by the evolutionary process no. but it was by God's word and we're in John the first chapter and the first five <laughs> verses and Mike why don't you read in the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay, so, we have here faith at its best. Notice, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was, was God. God, okay? So, what we see here, the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made, okay? They didn't evolve, but all things were made by Him, and without Him, what? There was not anything made that was made. Okay. So. There's no, there was no uh, rocks clanging together in outer space that broke up and created all of this. You know, it was it, when you read in Genesis in that first chapter. There's a lot of said, said, said. God said, God said, God, God said. said. His word. And that is how things were created. That that is creation. Is is God speaking things into existence? And, and our faith. I I know that's fact. That's that's just how. That's just how all this came together. And if you try to, to make it something else, that's not really, that's just somebody coming up with some harebrained idea of, oh, I, I, I think it, you know, when, when, when you talk to, to young kids, they'll come up with all kinds of ideas of, oh, how is this made? Or, or ask them, oh, what's this? They've never seen it before. They'll come up with all kinds of ideas of, of what it does. It does this, it does that. And, you know, I kind of liken it to uh, anything other than what God's word says about creation. It's It's just like, a child trying to come up with an idea uh, that makes sense to a child, you know. Yeah. And here on earth, our minds, we can't understand how God works, but he gives us his word and tells us how he created everything. Yes, he and created it with his word. Again, Psalm uh, 53, 1 says, The fool has said within his heart, there is no God. Everything just kind of created itself. It just all came together. Well, you know, that's absurd. That's foolishness. Nothing just creates itself. It, there, it, there has to be something for something to happen and for something to, to exist. You know, the, uh, uh, 
the uh, the planet Mars now has a uh, a rover on it. And here, just the other day, I heard on the news that now it is believed by the scientists that uh, Earth used to be part of Mars and that it broke off, okay? <laughs> because they're seeing things on Mars that kind of resemble things here on Earth. And uh, so they're saying it's, it's just kind of like a desert there on Mars. And, uh, but they're seeing things that look like things here on Earth. So it used to be part of it and it broke off and here we are today. Uh, you know what? Scientists get, just get wilder and wilder and crazier and crazier. And people think that just because they have PhD behind their name that they're smart. But they're not. They may be book smart, okay, but they're, a bunch of them are idiots. Literally. They have no idea what they're talking about. If they knew the Word of God, they would say, you know, God created that planet up there, and God created this planet, and God made that planet to not have any life on it, and God made this planet to have life. And water, everything that we need, everything that is necessary, is here on this planet, okay? Everything, everything, the food, the water, life, uh, whatever it is that we need, we have it here in abundance on this planet. And that's the way God created it. But he didn't create it on the moon, he created it to shine by night, and the planets to be in their place, in the heavens, the sun to, to be the, the day star. And so all these things were created by God. It was through his word. He spoke these things into existence. Yeah. yeah and it's, it's, as, as a believer, it's our faith. We have to, uh, we have, to have faith that, that God spoke. I mean, because if you can't believe that God... Uh, created heaven and earth by his word if you can't believe um a lot of people don't believe about the garden or adam and eve um that the, the earth is about six thousand years old if you can't believe that how in the world can you believe the promises that god has for you how could you believe that that you're going to heaven um if, if all those things aren't true you know it's it's really when you don't believe those things what you're trying to do is make god a, god a liar yeah and you make his word a lie but that we, we know that's not the case. We know that it's through our faith we believe all of these things because they're not just that we believe them, but we know that they're factual, that they're true. This is how things really are. Yeah. God is a blueprinter. He planned it out. Everything is so perfect in the heavens, here on earth, everything. The oceans are where they are. The oceans have their boundaries. You know, the rivers, um, foliage, life jungles, uh, cities, wherever. Everything is laid out. It's, it's blueprinted. It didn't just happen. Uh, it didn't just fall into place. Uh, it, uh, it came together with a divine plan. God created it all. And our faith in God holds to that. Our faith in God won't accept anything else. God is the creator. He blueprinted everything. He planned it out, and this is the way it is. And he spoke it into existence. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, there's, there's people um, that are not even godly. Um, but when you're out in the wilderness, when you see things, they'll say, man, this is, this is God's country. And they'll have no relationship with God, but they, give, they, they understand that yeah. <laughs> that's who created all this because it's so things you look at out in nature is just so beautiful so so awesome and they're in its absent of of people that could have made these things it's it's all god that, that put that all together he spoke it out you know and it's it's just um and you get closer to god when you're out in nature when you're watching the the sunset or the sunrise or you're out and you're watching just this this harmony that he has set up um where the animals are just doing their thing and everything's living together you know you, you really see uh, god's glory out there it's, yeah. it's really awesome you know here back in this third verse it says through faith we understand through faith we understand that the worlds notice that's plural worlds more than one okay were framed framed blueprinted planned out by the word of god notice that so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So what he is saying is uh, 
had creation been made out of materials subject to human observation, there would have been no room for faith. None whatsoever. If everything was already here and everything, why would we need faith? But our faith is that God made everything with his mouth. He spoke it into existence. And so that which we see and experience did not come into being out of existing materials, but from that which was not or ever was. That's what yeah, it, yeah that's, that, that's, that's the power of God. That's the omnipotence of God. That's the God that we have faith in. Yeah, and it's God's uh, creativity too. You, some, some of the uh, places, some of the just structures that happen naturally, just things that, that occur naturally, it's just like, who, who would have came up with that? Yeah. You know, there's not a person that would have came up with that. that that's, that's God. Uh, and, and the same thing through faith, um, when, when he helps us out in, in certain situations, we can't expect God to ever do anything the same way again. He always does it differently. He does always. things differently, he delivers us differently. And so and it's always in a creative way, a way that we, you know, oftentimes we wouldn't figure out, you know, oh, we have an idea of how God should do it, right? But, um, but God always does it his way, and it's always awesome. It always works out way better than, than any way we could have came up with. You know, it it's it's uh, that that's God's creativity because He created everything. You know? yeah. So, but it's through faith that we we believe that. Well, you know, look 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 at the human body. Each one of us, uh, we're a perfect specimen. The way God put us together, this it's a design. It's it's a plan. It's it's organized. Nothing as perfect as our body with all the intricate parts in it that are working at the same time. They're all separate, but they're all united. Didn't just develop. They didn't just evolve. They didn't just happen. There is a designer. There is a creator. God made everything. And our faith in God is what causes us to hold to that belief and to hold to that fact that God is God. He will always be God. He will never be anything else. He is on the throne. He will always be on the throne. And every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. So, praise God. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's just, um, like you're bringing up the human body, it's just so amazing that we're all made the same, right? But so many different people are, like if you take the Olympics, for example, all the people in the Olympics, they all look different depending on what sport they are. And, and, uh, and God makes us for a different, e each person, uh, for a different, different, different task. And, and that's what he does in, in his house is we're all uh, different parts of, of his body. And, and he puts us, you know, strengths, weaknesses in different areas. And so when, when God created the, the church, you know, he did that with, with a purpose in mind. And it's, you know, I just think when he created the church, you know, he gave us all different jobs. I'm so thankful that he gave me um, the jobs and the, and the things that I'm good at yeah. and some of the things I didn't think I was good at. He, he put me into a place and, and has helped me to grow in certain areas. Yeah. So it's just, it's just awesome. Yeah. Well, praise God. It's been it's so good to be with you today. Keep your faith in God. If you don't have faith in God right now, trust in God. Go to God's Word. Go to John 3.16. Build your faith beginning today.